Oh God, right, okay. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna get sacked. <laughs> South Africa, the most southerly point of the African continent. To the west, the Southern Atlantic, and to the east, the Indian Ocean a country home to over 57 million people, but also some of the most iconic species to have ever walked our planet. The Eastern Cape, the second largest province in South Africa, once dominated by farmland, but now due to conservation, the wildlife is coming back. We travel to the Kariga Game Reserve and over the next four episodes, accompanied by our guide, Joe, we will look at some outstanding biology witness some extraordinary behaviour and get an insight on some groundbreaking stories of conservation in the wild lands of South Africa. So it's first thing in the morning and we've come down to the river to look for some hippos. Now, there's no way we'd be doing this in the evening because that's when they'd be coming out of the water as they're mainly nocturnal, they'd be coming out to graze. Did you hear that? Mm. <laughs> One of the largest land mammals on Earth, hippos have incredible size and strength. And despite seeming slow in the water, they are remarkably fast on land and can easily outrun a human. So hippos can hold their breath for around seven minutes, but they'll usually resurface after around five. And <laughs> when they're sleeping, <laughs> this is an automatic process. So if they sink beneath the water, automatically their bodies raise themselves up so they can breathe and they don't even have to come to land, which is pretty cool. Hippos have dense bones, meaning they can't float. Instead, they propel themselves around on surfaces beneath the water, but they also come to land to feed. <gasps> Look, can you see it? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Hippos are scarce in the Eastern Cape, but in the Kariga Game Reserve, there are two large rivers which maintain a healthy population. But coming to land means coming into contact with humans sometimes resulting in human wildlife conflict. Hippos are thought to be one of the deadliest large mammals in Africa, being responsible for an estimated 500 human deaths each year. Here on the open plains, a host of animals enjoy a feast of lush vegetation, making large herbivores plentiful. Native antelope species, including impala, Blesbuck and Nyala congregate in herds as they graze on the finest shoots. But these animals must be wary, as they themselves can be a meal for one of the savannah's top predators, the king of all beasts, the lion. Lions in the Eastern Cape had become completely exterminated by the 1850s due to hunting practices. But reintroduction programs in the region have been hugely successful. The lions here in Kariga were reintroduced to the reserve in 2004 and are now thriving. So we've just had a glimpse of their massive canines, but a lion's bite force is actually incredibly weak compared to the likes of other big cats. And that's because most big cats are known to be solitary, with lions being the only species to live in a pride. Now, a lone lion will attempt to take down much smaller prey type, but when the pride needs feeding, they'll work together as a group to take down a much larger animal. Sleeping between roughly 18 to 20 hours a day, as the air becomes cooler, they begin to awaken, gathering the pride for a potential hunt. Lions will mostly stalk medium-sized herbivores, but have also been known to attack elephants. This, however, is extremely rare, but when the pride works together, the lion certainly becomes one of Africa's deadliest animals. Sadly, it is estimated that only around 20,000 wild lions remain across Africa, a 43% decline in just three generations a stark reminder that we are rapidly losing much of our biodiversity. But thanks to conservation efforts, one wild cat species that is extinct in the Eastern Cape will hopefully be making a comeback. 
Now these animals don't chase their prey like other predators. Instead, they wait and listen, then pounce on their prey, delivering a fatal bite to the neck. The serval, one of South Africa's most elusive wild cats. Primarily nocturnal and very rarely seen, we have been extremely lucky to be invited to take an up-close and personal look at the Kariga Game Reserve's serval breeding programme. It is like opening the gate to Jurassic Park. <laughs> Servals can be unpredictable animals, and without Joe, we wouldn't be able to enter their enclosure. However, Joe has been rearing the servals with the aim of them being reintroduced into the wild, so we follow her lead inside. The serval breeding program is basically because in this area there used to be servals, and because of all the farming happening in this area and new towns popping up, the serval population has gone down quite a bit. We have tried before where you bring in servals. After a few months, you release them. They just go back to where they came from. It could be 100 kilometers away or it could be 500 kilometers. It's a homing instinct like any other cat. So what we're thinking is if you breed them here, the kittens, this is their home. So this is where they'll stay, mm -hmm. hopefully. So there's a lot of different theories, but we have to try something. In the wild, servals are remarkable predators, hunting anything from insects and mice to reptiles and birds. Their power is held in their stocky back legs, which they use to launch themselves up to three metres into the air, swiping prey out of the sky. On the ground, they use their acute hearing to locate prey before pouncing. And on the African plains, smaller prey types are no match for the serval. And hopefully, these cats will one day be back in the wild, on the open savannas, where they belong. Now, of course, in the wild, we could never get this close to servals, and it's a real privilege to be in here, this close to them with Joe. And these breeding programs are so important at re-establishing populations back into their natural range. And they really are feisty little predators. <laughs> gonna get her own food. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey, it's my bucket. Oh. <laughs> Do you think we've got it, Ben? Next time on Wildland South Africa, we take a look at some of the more peculiar species which roam the African plains. And subscribe to BBC Earth for more fascinating wildlife videos from around the world.